Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Rubio. Today I will talk to you about, you know, immunotherapy for cancer. You know, right now we have more than 200 million people with cancer. And cancer, you know, is a disease that has a multiple genes affected. So we call it polygenetic. This is why it's very hard to treat this disease. Okay? So in, the, in these patients, you know, when they develop the tumor, you know, we in our in our DNA, we have like we call tumor suppressors, we have initiators or promoters. When the initiator or promoter, you know, pass, you know, and don't allow the tumor to suppress or to stop it, patient will develop a cancer. Okay? So right now, you know, in, in, in the hospital we have techniques that we can work at this level to use, like we call gene editing. We can look in the DNA profile, you know, how many genes patient has traveled. Uh, in our experience, we find the more than 1,500 genes are affected in cancer. So sometimes it's very hard to, to change a gene. It's not a, a monogenetic that we can ch change one gene and that's it. So we need to change like a 1,500 genes. But like we are doing, during this technique, we uh, we get the genes, for example, you know, if the patient has the 1500, we go to the top, we get like, a, for example, 500 in the top, 200 in the middle, 100, 200 in the bottom of the DNA. When we change these genes, you know, we stop the cell to keep growing. Uh, like we say, we stop the tumor to keep multiplying. In this moment, you know, the cancer is stopped. But what's happened, you know, sometimes, sometimes happen, you know, the same gene and the other DNA, they can affect and they can make the cell to grow. But this is why we use a technique that we call, you know, gene editing. So like we do, we have a specific scissors that we call enzymatic scissors that we call nucleases. And we can cut the piece of DNA and change it for, D, for new DNA and we use, like we call, receptors or black receptors of the gene there, okay? This technique is very effective, you know, because when we use this change of the, or the DNA, we stop the cancer to grow, and we give time to the patient three, six, nine months to not allow any cell to grow. And this way, you know, the combination of the immunotherapy, for example, we stop the DNA right now, and now we use the immunotherapy, you know. We have a, a vaccine very effective that we call the RNA transference of the lymphocytes that we train the lymphocytes to destroy the cancer cells. And this patient, for example, lung cancer, right now lung cancer, we have different type of tumors, you know. Uh, we have a tumor like we call adenocarcinomas. We have a small cell, large cell, sarcomas. You know, they affect the lungs. We have the mesoteliomas too. One of the initiators or promoters that we forget all the time, you know, uh, we've been talking for years, you know, about the smoking. You know, the smoke, or the cigarette, the nicotine, they will be a big initiator or promoter of lung cancer. It's very important that we need to know that everybody will be born with 24% of developed tumor. And when we use or uh, start smoking, you know, we are going to initiate or promote the gene to develop the lung cancer. So, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, the advertisement, you know, you don't smoke, don't use the asbestos, you know, the chemicals, the pollution, you know, uh, this is a, a big promoter. Uh, this, this patient, you know, they develop a tumor, you know, the early symptoms, you know, it's, it's different, you know. Sometimes patients, they have like a, you know, symptoms like a cough, uh, you know, fevers, uh, losing weight, losing the appetite. Uh, they go to the doctor, the doctor gotta do different testing to, to find the cancer. First of all, we gotta do an x-ray. After that, a CAT scan or MRI or PET scan. After that, we find a little, a little tumor you know, next step, do a biopsy. Uh, you know, we can do like a bronchoscopy, okay? And from there, we are going to get the cells and see what kind of cancer the patient has. You know, we start working with immunotherapy. 
Uh, we have two, two phases right now, you know, before, you know, we, the only way to know, you know, and get cancer cells was for doing biopsies. But right now, you know, uh, we have a, a technique that we call Oncoquick that we can pick it up antigens in the bloodstream. So sometimes we don't need to develop a biopsy to get some cells from the original cancer. And this way we can develop this vaccine. The vaccine, you know, to create this vaccine, you know, like we do, we get the antigens or the piece of the tumor and we place it in like, in like we call a Petri dish. And the Petri dish is a little culture, it's a little box in the laboratory that we allow to harvest the cancer cells of the antigens. So we allow these cancer cells to harvest. When, we, when the tumor is multiplied, like we do, we use specific techniques to make a receptor in these cancer cells. So when these cancer cells or antigen has a receptor, like we do next, we go, to, we go through the patient or the cancer, and we withdraw more blood, and we extract and select the natural killer cells. These natural killer cells, like we call lymphocytes or the T cells, we place it with the tumor is growing, but the tumor has a, this receptor when the lymphocytes see the receptor, they attach and they will attack and they will destroy the tumor in, in vitro, but they will develop or get a memory to destroy this tumor in the future. This vaccine, vaccine is very effective. In about seven days, 11 days or 14 days, they has the memory like we do, we apply back and we, we give it to the patients. In combination with the, with, the, with the gene therapy, you know, we use like we call the, the gene blockers. Uh, you hear about, you know, block the PC or PIDs, PIDs, you know, sick, the PIDs. Blocking the PIDs in lungs and prostate, you know, we are able to block the cell to grow, but we are at the same time working with immunotherapy.